Hello there everyone, Witch Hazel, back after a long spell away, unfortunately. But today I would like to start things fresh and talk a little bit about productive record keeping and why I decided to get rid of 20 years worth of journals. So if that sounds interesting to you, please stay tuned and I will let you know all about it. All right, so journals, productive record keeping, why is this important? Well, we as witchy folk do a lot of stuff and we tend to put a big emphasis on record keeping. Why? Because this is how we get to see if what we do, the spells we cast, the rituals we do, are working for us. Did it come out the way we wanted it to? If it didn't, why do we think that was? And what do we want to do about it? Record keeping is a great way to improve in general in any area of life. But again, as witches, we tend to do it a lot. So what does this have to do with journaling specifically? Not a whole lot, except I get the feeling that a lot of you are probably like me and are avid journal keepers and or writers and or paper keepers. <laughs> we love our books, we love our pens, we love our planners, we love these things, and we tend to have a lot of them, especially for things like spell work. We have a notebook for spell work, a notebook for brews that we make up, incense, oils, etc. We have a notebook for tarot, we have a notebook for rituals, we put it, we try to put it all into a great big book of shadows. So all in all, all of these records can be very useful and meaningful and important, but a lot of it gets scattered. Which is why I'm going to talk about journals specifically. Now when I say journal, you can take this to mean any sort of note-keeping process that you have. I use journals. I do morning pages in the morning. And right now I have gotten into using just the Traveler's Notebook inserts for this. And here's why. When I was packing up fairly recently, last September, to move again for the winter, I had a lot of paper stuff that I did not want to bring with me because for one thing it's heavy and I was not convinced that it was all that useful to me. You may remember I did a video in the past about all of my multitude of journals and when you look back at it I had about 20 years worth of journals that I had started in high school that I have been continually schlepping with me. And I decided, after looking through them, that this was not useful. It was not productive, it was not necessary. And I ditched them, all of them, except the most recent one because that did have some things in it that I thought I might want to keep. Now, many people have argued with me over the years Oh, you should keep your journals, because I've thought about it before. Oh, you should keep your journals, what about your kids, your great grand, your grandkids, your great grandkids, they're all going to want to know about you and your life and what you did, what you saw. Here's the thing. <laughs> In that case, yes, I believe there are certain things that should be remembered and that I may want to pass on to future generations, my nieces at the very least. But, I mean, me as the person being remembered, I want to curate that stuff. I don't want them just to get a hold of any old useless info you know, that they have to sift through to get to the good stuff. That's why I'm putting in the effort now, right? To learn and grow. So, yes, I believe things should be kept for posterity. But no, not every single thing. In the case of morning pages, you will note these morning pages, as they are written out or as they are set up by the originator of the term, it's a massive brain dump is what it is. It's getting all of your thoughts out on paper to get them down and gone so that you can move forward with what you've got to do today. As a brain dump, 
Does it really need to be kept? In my case, I don't think so. So I realized that the vast majority of my journaling for the past 20 years has been brain dumping. Just bleh on paper, just getting things out that I did not want to have to think about anymore. That was my first realization. And if that's the case, why schlep it around with me? I'm getting it onto paper specifically to get rid of it, right? So realization number two with this was, not only was it stuff that I did not necessarily want to continue to schlep, there was an emotional reason why I didn't want to do that. I have mentioned before that there have been significant gaps in my journaling. And all of these gaps have to do with when I'm happy. When I'm happy, I tend to not journal because I'm busy being in that moment, in that emotion. I am enjoying what I'm doing and not taking the time to write it down. Now, is that a good thing to do? Probably not. I should be writing those things down. I should be memorializing those things. But historically, I have not. Therefore, that means the vast majority of the actual emotional, personal stuff that I put into my journal has been negative. Negative emotions. Negative experiences. And I did. I did sit down with all of my journals before I got rid of them and I tried to sift through, read through, to see if there was anything I wanted to save. And what I very quickly realized was one, it should have been an automatic thing for me that, well, I haven't looked at these in 20 years, so is there really anything to, that's important to me? If I haven't looked at it, probably not. But that was reiterated then when I did start looking through it and realized that all it did, all looking at that did, was dredge up those old emotions again, and I did not want that. I wanted it out of my life in the first place, that's why I wrote it down, to get it out of my head. So I realized that all of that stuff, I don't want to take it with me. I don't want to keep schlepping it around. I want to start fresh. Now, I want to keep this video short, kind of succinct. So I'm going to get into that a little bit more of why I wanted to do that, hopefully in the next video. But the idea was I want to start fresh. I don't want to continue taking these negative things with me. So that was the reason I got rid of the journals. And what I have done since then, one thing I realized was, well, what hurt was getting rid of those beautiful journals. Some of the leather bound, beautiful paper, beautiful covers. And I thought, yeah, but what is the point of having something so beautiful when I know the stuff I'm putting into it is not stuff that I want to keep? That's why I decided to start using the Traveler's Notebook inserts. They're not pretty. This one I happen to make myself, but in general, they're not done up. They're not pretty. They're just useful. And they're small, so I can keep just a specific, you know, short, maybe a couple of months in here, uh, if depending on how much I write, and call it good. And then if I want to sort through here to see if there's anything valuable that I want to keep for posterity, I can. It's a much smaller, easier to handle chunk of information that I can go through. So that is my idea with these morning pages. I am still journaling as I always did in these, but I have also realized that I need to continue trying to create more positive reflections and journal entries, which you saw me try to start doing a little bit, I believe last year, maybe the year before, but I, I have started doing that a little bit. So the trick is to get myself to focus on reflecting a bit more. It's been inconsistent so far, but hopefully will become consistent in future. All right, so how does all of this relate to what we're doing in our witchy progress? I think many of us do the same type of thing as what I've described with my journaling in our witchy progress, in our notes. So collecting things for the Book of Shadows, testing out things, we just kind of jot things down randomly in journals or over time in journals and then we maybe don't go back to look at them. At least I didn't. 
maybe I'm the only one, I don't know. <laughs> but if you do, if you do go back and look at what you wrote and learn from it, then perfect, that's wonderful. But if you're like me, and that is difficult to do, or you're trying to get into that kind of stream of reflection, I would suggest to do the same kind of thing with your magical practices. So keep a just kind of a down and dirty journal to just keep everything in one spot, keep it all down, write it down, take notes, anything and everything. But I would say try to schedule a specific day or amount of time, maybe during the week, to look back at it and make sure to reflect. Maybe start to use this magical journal in conjunction with a planner, if you're a planner person, and schedule the times to look back and review and see how did this work out? Did I like how it worked? Did I not like it? What do I want to change? And make a plan for the future of how you're going to do that. That is what I kind of consider productive record keeping to be. I am, of course, not good at this. <laughs> oh, well, I, I'm okay at it. I can get into good runs with it, but I am in inconsistent with it. So, in another video, I have, hopefully, I'm planning more videos, I swear. <laughs> I, I'll talk a little bit more about that. But for this one, I just wanted to bring up the topic and see what you thought about it and get something up because I haven't gotten anything up on YouTube in ages. So for all of you who have stuck with me through the drought, thank you very much. And I will be seeing you again soon. Merry meet, blessed be, etc, etc. Talk to you later. <laughs> Bye.